Uh, dear colleagues, I will stay in the corridor, but uh, this time I will focus on something completely different. I won't show you any 3D animation, uh, but I will skip this. We'll talk about small choroidal lesions in the choroid from the clinical uh, praxis. We all know we just look at the fundus, and after one second we know this is a nevus and this is a hypertrophy of the RPE. So in these cases, we do not need any sophisticated investigations, but what about in this case? So sometimes you're not really sure what it is, and if you apply an OCT, then you see that in case of a hypertrophy of the RPE, uh, the lesion is confined to the RPE, whereas if you have a nevus, then uh, something is uh, only in the uh, choroid, distributed in the choroid, and uh, this is a hyperreflective uh, band you see within the choroid uh, for the nevus. And on magnification, then you see that this is not, it's just reflecting the infiltration of the choroid uh, by melanocytes, as we already know from histopathological slides. But how do nevi look like uh, when you perform OCT? I just show you the uh, flat, uh, uh, flat uh, pattern of a nevus but most of them are growing towards the vitreous and having a dome-shaped pattern. And for reasons that we do not understand at the moment, there is, we have no clue about this, about 10% of the nevi are growing initially, not towards the uh, vitreous, but uh, down to the sclera, showing this sclera bowing you see here. So this is at the very beginning, because if they uh, progress, then they, they got an almond-shaped uh, pattern. But uh, this is something we now are able to see with the Sepsos OCD, and um, we thought this is new, but this is not new. Um, histopathological studies in the 60s, I think even in the 50s, uh, have already described that there are three different patterns of growth uh, for, for choroidal nevi. Except the growth pattern, you are also able to see some very sometimes uh, useful uh, features within the uh, nevi, just like the uh, choroidal vessels. We have already seen uh, Dr. Maleha showed us uh, excellent uh, 3D animations of these choroidal vessels. And uh, these choroidal vessels in nevi are regularly patterned, and this is something you won't see in small melanomas. In melanomas, and this is also something we know from histopathological studies, uh, the vasculature is not uh, normally uh, a pattern as we see in nevus, and I will show you some examples in, 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 in a few minutes. Also, if you look carefully in, on, on nevi, then you see this between the RPE and the top of, of the tumor, you will see some hyperreflective, uh, an hyperreflective band, which is the choreo capillaris. And in most of the nevi, you will be able to see the choreo capillaries, whereas in melanomas, this is something, in most of the cases, you will be missing. So you get some useful information by doing a swept OCT or OCT on, on nevi, and of course you have some other uh, uh, characteristics like enlarged choroidal vessels just aside uh, 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 of the tumor margins, and Possibly the most important feature you get by using the Sepsos OCT or the EDI, but the Sepsos, as we have heard, is uh, superior uh, um, uh, to EDI, especially if you have pigmented tumors, um, is that you you're able to apply measurements. And many papers are describing that you just get up to three to 400 microns with the OCT, but as I'm showing you here, then it, in some cases you may go even uh, deeper, up to one millimeter, with, uh, with the uh, Swepsos OCT and be able to see the uh, choroidal sclera border. And of course some other uh, features like uh, alterations of the RPE, we have seen that uh, today uh, the irregular uh, RPE uh, uh, elevation which is also uh, present in, in some nevi, but you won't see uh, um, very, very uh, progressed alterations within the retina if you have a nevus. The measurement of, uh, uh, with an OCT is, uh, as has been shown uh, uh, in comparative studies, uh, precise and more accurate than doing that with uh, ultrasonography because 
In ultrasonography, we'll miss uh, this case. What about melanomas? Melanomas, there are two major limitations. The first limitation is that the uh, scan is just 2.5 millimeters deep. So, and most of the melanomas are greater and thicker than 2.5 millimeters. So, in most of the cases, you won't be able to, uh, to document the tumor in whole. But uh, you still see uh, a lot of uh, details. And the second uh, problem we have is that the signal of the OCT, um, also compared to the nevi, is lost very early on the top of the tumor. So if you have a nevus, then you're able to go, in most of the cases, if, if, it, if it is highly pigmented, up to four or five microns inside the tumor. But in melanomas, you lose the signal about two, two and, uh, 250 microns under the RPE. Um, this is another case showing us that, of course, we do have, uh, we do have a lot of information about uh, what happens uh, between uh, the tumor and the retina. And on magnification, you see that the RPE is lost, uh, the retina is completely destroyed, and this is not a huge tumor. This is not a huge melanoma. This is a melanoma uh, less than uh, two millimeters thick, which is a small melanoma, actually. But the pattern we see between melanomas and nevi uh, uh, is not the same. You can also use the OCT for monitoring treatment, and this is a case, a prior treatment of a, a small melanoma going up to the fovea, and eight months after protobeam C radiation, you see there is uh, an increase of the serous detachment under the fovea, but some months later, the uh, fovea reattached and the whole uh, uh, retina reattached. But the most interesting thing in that case for me is not the, uh, the retina, but the vitreous. Because prior to treatment, the vitreous was detached. And uh, after treatment, you see there are two focal adhesions remaining even after uh, that period. Uh, uh, focal adhesions are next to the fovea, which giving us uh, a clue about what kind of inflammatory response may occur within the globe after irradiation inducing possibly this kind of adhesions within the globe. Less spectacular is looking in, in uh, at scars after plaque radiotherapy, but you can also see everything behind, but there is in 90-90% of the cases nothing behind, but this is a case I referred to us with uh, suspicious of a recurrence uh, treated 12 years ago with a plaque and um, on on ultrasonography, there was um, suspicious, some extraocular growth, but after we performed Swepsos OCT, we found that there was a, a pseudostaphyloma, like, like a scleral ecstasia, which may occur after heart irradiation of the sclera. So there is no tumor mass inside, and it's nothing to do in those cases, but uh, we were happy having the Swepsos. Fortunately, not any tumor is a malignant one, and the choroidal melanomas, they are getting diagnosed after they are get uh, symptomatic. And hemangiomas do have a characteristic pattern um, in, 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 in OCT. And this is something like a honeycomb or spons-like pattern is called. And on magnification, we see again that what we see is just the blood filled cavernous. And uh, from histopathology, you know, most of the hemangiomas are uh, predominantly cavernous, and they do have some uh, mixed part with capillaries, but most of them are cavernous hemangiomas, and that is what we're seeing on, uh, on our OCT. These are other cases, and of course we have uh, subretinal fluid and changes uh, within the retina. It's all described, and it's very common in choroidal hemangiomas. But pl please notice that uh, you're able, in most of the hemangiomas, you're able to uh, see the whole dimension of the tumor with the sepsis OCT. The signal is much better than in the pigmented uh, nevi. This is a case of uh, choroidal enlargement or thickening uh, nasal part and also here, but we also have some uh, retinal deposits or infiltrates, serous detachment, and the line scan is showing uh, much more detail for this choroidal infiltrate and the serous detachment, but please also look 
on the overlying vitreous, so if you see, see the overlying vitreous, there is also some deposit there, and you may guess this is a case of a uveitis. And I do lob the swept source OCT for monitoring uh, the uh, success in uveitis cases, because as you see here, you're not only able to see the regression of the choroidal infiltrate or of the retinal features, but also the vitreous is clear after treatment, so you are able to monitor the whole inflammatory response within the eye with the sepsis OCT. This is a case of a capillary angioma, and you see there are uh, a, dense, uh, a dense tumor, and the signal, there's a shadowing of the signal within the uh, angioma because they are not only blood filled, but there is a lot of fibrosis also within these angiomas. And five minutes after treatment, you see that uh, the signal within the tumor is, uh, is, is changed, and you have now uh, a signal going uh, up to the uh, sclera. And look at the choroid. There is an immediate response of the choroid. The choroid is uh, half as thick as it was five minutes before. And two days later, you see that the signal is still, uh, uh, there is some shadowing, but not as much as in the beginning. The denaturation of the retina, there is some, possibly <coughs> some choroidal detachment down there and the choroid is uh, uh, back to normal. So with the sepsis OCT, you get some details. You can monitor uh, the treatment uh, you apply in the eye. And this is my last case. Uh, this is not the choroid, this is a part, uh, is the uvea. And I just wanted to show you a case because I think there is no presentation on anterior segment tumors uh, uh, um, in, those in, 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 in that Congress. And, um, of course, with the sepsis OCT, if you have the anterior segment adapter, you are able to uh, imagine also the anterior segment uh, perfectly and use, and use the OCT not only for making the measurements, but to get the information if this is the peak of the iceberg or is just the tumor uh, uh, confined to the, uh, to the anterior segment. And I don't know if you see the signal there, but there is this a signal there, so you... In many cases, you're also able to get that information with the swept source OCT. Uh, you don't have to uh, apply other, uh, other imaging uh, tools. So in summary, I think with the swept source OCT, you are able to do a lot of things in ocular tumors, and uh, we're all happy to having that. Thank you very much. <laughs>